Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Craig's Sports. Today is Wednesday, once again we do not have a Thursday night football game this week, so we're going to be switching up, talking a little bit different. So this is going to be kind of my thoughts on Dwayne Haskins, the whole situation. You know what I think of him overall as a player. But, uh, without further ado, we'll get into it. And, you know, Dwayne Haskins, he was a quarterback at Ohio State, came out after his redshirt sophomore year, after a very, very good year. I thought he probably should have stayed in school for another year, just kind of worked on refining his craft. He was more of a project quarterback to me. You will see, I'm going to go through some of the, you know, the draft profiles, what other people were saying at him coming into the draft, and then we'll kind of talk about his situation that happened as well. But for me... You know, he's kind of a project quarterback, more like a second-round pick to me. He's got a good arm, but not a great arm. You know, He's got some good zip on the ball when he needs to, but he's not great at throwing the ball deep over the top. You know, he's had some inconsistencies in his game, as you guys have probably already noticed over the past year or so. A lot of what these scouts talked about is a lot of what I see as well, especially in the mechanics. I'm not real fond of his mechanics. He's got a lot of things to clean up. You know, if he puts the effort and work in, he could still be a decent NFL quarterback. But he's got to have that want to, and so far from what we've seen, he really hasn't had that. That's pretty much a quick rundown on my thoughts. You know, I think he's probably somebody that's going to end up getting another chance. Uh, it's important to know that he was not claimed on waivers, so pretty much he's a free agent. Any team can sign him. I don't think any team's going to sign him until after the season's over. Uh, you don't want that distraction in there, especially with him breaking the COVID protocols twice. It just it's too risky to even consider this year. So we'll get over, and the first one was from the Draft Network. We got the three different analysts here. So I'm going to go through real quick, kind of give you a brief summary of what they said. So as far as arm accuracy went, you know, they said he's pretty good, you know, on the shorter intermediate routes, struggled over the top. That's mainly the consensus here, honestly. But for me, like when, even when I watched the highlights from Ohio State, his accuracy was okay, but his ball placement wasn't always ideal. So decision-making, you know, they said he was pretty careful with the ball overall. Didn't take too many unnecessary risks. The arm strength is kind of what I talked about already. The progressions really depended on who was scouting him. Some people thought he moved through his progressions fairly well. For me, I think he's more. Of, he was shown more of a one-read quarterback. If his read wasn't there, sometimes he struggled. And we kind of seen that in the NFL too. And you see that a lot with quarterbacks in the NFL. Sometimes it takes them a while to you know learn different defenses and be able to adjust to that, say, hey, my first read's not open. Okay, now I need to make my second read progression. But a lot of times with young quarterbacks, you either see them stuck on the one read, or when their one read's not there, they kind of take off and run. And he's done that quite a bit now. That's one thing I will give him credit for. He's a little bit more mobile than a lot of people thought coming out of the draft, at least initially. I know they kind of talked about his pocket presence and struggling against pressure, though. And honestly, there's a lot of time, or at least... In his NFL career, there's been a lot of times that he has struggled with pocket presence. Uh, I'm going to go over two plays from this past week against Carolina. One of them is going to be a pocket presence play, and then one of them is going to be more mechanics. They talked about improvising, you know, throwing the run, stuff like that. He can get out of the pocket a little bit, but when he tries to throw that on the run, actually, his mechanics just get even worse than they already are, and... Like, sometimes he'll make a play, but a lot of the times the ball's either in the wrong spot, it's inaccurate, or just doesn't end up working out. So there is a lot of good and a lot of bad with Dwayne Haskins at this point in time. Uh, most of it's obviously going to be the off-the-field issues. Obviously, we know a little bit about it, you know. Like, I hate to question somebody's character and their love for the game, but in his situation, you kind of have to question it a little bit just because you, you really haven't seen him put in that work, make that progression, you know. Most of you guys have probably seen this year, you know, he started the first few games. Kyle Allen came in. Kyle Allen got hurt. Alex Smith takes over. Alex Smith gets hurt. Dwayne Haskins comes in. You think if you have one chance now, like you want to be prepared and you want to go out and play your best football that you can possibly play. And honestly, this game against Carolina this past week is probably one of the two worst quarterback performances I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's just hard to watch somebody that's so young and at one point had so much promise kind of derail his whole career like this and you know whether it's just being you know just not making smart choices you know going out to a strip club without wearing a mask especially after you just lost a game like a couple hours before that like you your focus should be on football especially if you're supposed to be the quarterback and leader of this team 
Obviously, he didn't care about that. He, he snuck somebody into their hotel, breaking COVID protocol earlier in the year as well. You know, you had the things before that, him taking a selfie with the fan instead of going out on the field when they're going to win the game last year. Uh, when he was drafted, he was charging people to come into his draft party, which to me is honestly ridiculous because you're getting drafted in the first round of the NFL and you're asking people for money to come to your party when you're going to be making a couple million dollars and like two hours later. That's just ridiculous to me. For me, here's the thing. He played at Ohio State. He played with a bunch of great wide receivers too. You know, Terry McLaurin, who we've seen do very well in the NFL. Paris Campbell, who's had flashes, but he's always been hurt. And then K.J. Hill, who was drafted this year as well out of Ohio State, but he hasn't done much yet. But he's one of the top receivers in Ohio State history in terms of college production. One important thing to note, too, is him and his agent mutually agreed to part ways now. I think it's more probably his agent. He doesn't want to be tied to somebody like this. And that's completely understandable for an agent's perspective. If somebody else comes in and they become your agent, then, you know, hey, we can kind of work on cleaning up your image, you know, reinvigorating your career, you know. And if they can do that, that's going to help them out as an agent, too. Instead of trying to have his former agent, you know, trying to be connected to him and potentially drag him down. You know, if a different agent comes in, even if he doesn't succeed, then it's like, well, it's kind of writing on the wall. But if you can help this kid, you know, it's definitely going to be good for him and your agent potential as well. Like I said, we're going to look at some film. So I'm going to get over to that real quick. We're going to be looking at two plays in particular. So the first one is going to be a throw where... Dwayne Haskins had pretty good mechanics, but made a poor decision. So it's going to show us that he has the ability to have good mechanics, even though most of this game, his mechanics were not good at all. So, Okay, so this one's going to be at full speed. Tight end's going to come in motion. That's Logan Thomas. They're going to do a play-action fake. And you're going to see him throw the interception, throw it short to Logan Thomas there. Pretty quick, pretty simple. Uh, not the best play in the world, obviously. Not the best decision-making. Now we're going to look at it from behind Haskins' view. I'm going to see the fake to the running back. Not the best fake, but it'll do. Decent, you know, set his feet pretty decently. Decent throw. Just poor decision making. All right. So this time we're going to do it in slow motion. So we're going to be talking about what's going on here. So obviously, Logan Thomas, he's going to go in motion. So he's going to come across here. He's going to go up. He's going to get kind of interfered with by the linebackers. He's either trying to run a corner route here or he's trying to run a deep out route. And then on the bottom side of this play, we're going to have the far bottom wide receiver. He's going to kind of go in and then the slot wide receiver is going to wrap around him and then run a go route essentially. Um, and then this wide receiver that's at the far bottom of your screen, he's either going to run a post route over here or it's an option route where it can convert to a post or kind of go straight at the safety, just depending on how the safety is playing. Out of the backfield, you're going to have Antonio Gibson. He's going to fake it, then kind of run a little route out in the flat here. And he's the one that's actually going to be wide open on this play. That's probably who Dwayne Haskins should have dumped the ball down to because he was the only one that actually ended up being open on this play, and you can't force the throw to Logan Thomas. So so this time it's going to be in slow motion. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to let me know. So once again, we got Logan Thomas moving in motion, trying to shift the defense, see if they're, you know, man zone anything, tip off what they're playing in. You know, you got your play action fake here. Linebackers kind of holds them down but not really you know you got the two guys in between Thomas there one linebacker passes off to the other the other one kind of sits underneath and Dwayne Haskins throws it right to him I mean the guy did have to try to jump for the ball a little bit but still wasn't a good throw by any means so once again we're going to look at the wide receivers this time so we got down at the bottom here so we're going to highlight this guy on the bottom Logan Thomas coming in motion still Looking at our wide receivers down here. So you got the top guy. He's going to kind of clear out. And the guy in the slot is going to fall behind him. He's running that go route once again. They almost look like they're running the same go route at first. But he's coming in kind of on that post route. But kind of takes it up. Depending on how that safety was read, I'm guessing. 
And then last but not least, we'll watch that running back coming out of the flats. You got Logan Thomas in motion once again. Got that fake. Everybody's pretty much, uh, at this point, everybody's covered. Back's coming out of the backfield down here. Look at this. He's wide open. Look at all that green grass. There's not anybody within 10 yards of him. And you're throwing the ball here. Like, just dump it off to your running back. You got four yards at minimum, and you got 10 yards worth of space. Just make the smart play. We'll get behind the quarterback view one more time real quick. Just kind of showing it from that angle once again, and then we'll get over to our next play. Got tight end in motion once again. If you're looking at this defense, you're not seeing anything particular that stands out in this defense before the, you know, from your pre-snap reads at least. We got that play action fake once again. They probably could have sold it a little bit more. Linebackers obviously didn't buy it. And right out of the backfield, wide open. But you got to throw the ball down the field to get picked off instead. So Okay, so we'll get moved over to the next play then. And the next one is going to be the one with the poor pocket presence by Dwayne Haskins. So I will, once again, I'll show you guys this play in full speed. And then we'll kind of go back and break it down as well. So in this one, it's going to be empty backfield. You're going to see the guy at the top of the screen, the guy in the slot run crossing routes. Haskins just kind of takes off out of the pocket for no reason. He ends up getting a completion to Cam Sims because he just ended up wide open on this play. Broken play shouldn't have worked out the way it did. So now we're going to get come back from the defensive angle. Pretty simple defense here. They're just going to rest four guys. Nobody really gets pressure on him initially. Then you see him take off and curl to the left for whatever reason. And then that kind of put himself in pressure instead of just keeping in the clean pocket that he did have. So not the best pocket presence there. We'll go back to the beginning of the play kind of tell you what's going on here. So on this play, you got J.D. McKissick at the top of your screen, Logan Thomas inside of him. You got Cam Sims running this slot. I'm not quite sure who these two wide receivers are here off the top of my head. But you're going to see J.D. McKissick. He's going to come across on a little crosser route. You're going to see Cam Sims do the same. You hope that these two defenders are going to kind of get mixed up and one of these guys get wide open. That would probably be your first read in this. Logan Thomas, his job is to come up here and clear out space in the middle. He does not do the best at that job. He, honestly, he gets kind of jumbled up in the middle, and that kind of delays this progression of the play in the middle of the field here. So you're going to have Logan Thomas. He'll go by, and he actually ends up sitting here for a while. I'm not sure if that's what they told him to do, in the, if it's an option route or something like that, but it just was kind of weird to me. Then on the bottom, you're going to see this wide receiver kind of come in, run a little like rub or a pick route, and then this guy's going to run outside of him, kind of like our last play and run and go route, essentially. But that's a pretty simple version of it. It's probably, you know, it's a crosser route or a mesh concept, just depending on how you want to call it. But essentially, the tight end's job is to clear out the space in the middle, run the two crossers on that, and then run that little pick play on the back side, see if they can get it to work. You know, your first read's probably going to be one of those two crossing routes, whoever ends up open on it. Your second read, probably that progression on the back side. So probably one, two is the crossing routes, three is whoever's on the back side. And then like your fourth is either taken off and run or if that tight end's open in the middle of the field. But we'll go in slow motion this time. So you're going to see Logan Thomas come up first. Doesn't really clear out the middle. Everything's just too tight in this center here. Not what you want to see on your crossing route. And Sims is actually going to get open on this point. And by the time he, when he's getting open is when Dwayne Haskins is rolling around and leaving the pocket even though he did not have to do so. Then he kind of gets over here. Then he kind of steps back into the pressure. And then, you know, Sims is wide open. But you don't want to have to make this throw. It's a very difficult throw to be making. And so, at the end of the day, Dwayne Haskins probably made this a lot harder play than it really needed to be. Uh, so, we kind of seen the crossing route and everything. It jumped up on the middle. We'll, we'll look at this bottom side now. So, you got the one wide receiver kind of coming in. And the guy coming around him here. He's kind of like... They're, they're hand fighting more than anything. 
Uh, so Gorat's not there. None, he's not really open there at that point. These, this guy and this guy need to come back to Haskins, come back to the ball when it's a scramble drill, if that's what it is. Instead, they kind of everybody kind of takes off going deep, and then you got Sims at the top of your screen wide open. So we'll look at it from the defense angle once again, slow motion. So you'll see number 93 is going to get double teamed here. 95, Derek Brown, he's going to get some outside leverage, but that's not really it. A concern because they kind of push him off to the outside those two guys kind of switch there is a clean pocket here sims is coming open on this side uh, you just got to throw the ball lead the ball a little bit throw it to him you got an easy completion instead you go way outside the pocket run yourself into that guy pretty much then have to come back over here kind of comes back too much and then runs himself into those two guys as well just gets bailed out by the defense more or less number 54 that came across the route with Sims, he kind of went after the quarterback instead of the back, instead of Sims on the backside. So really just a broken play. But I wanted to show these two plays because it showed that he could have decent mechanics and, but make poor decisions and that the pocket awareness is not what it needs to be at this time. So there's a lot of growth to be had with Dwayne Haskins. He could still be a, potentially a good quarterback in time. He's just a project right now. He needs help. And, you know, it's both on the field and off the field. Hopefully he gets a chance to, you know, kind of redeem himself. Um, it'll be interesting to see which team does end up picking him up. But hopefully you guys all enjoyed this. Kind of my thoughts on him. Some of the little scouts' thoughts of him coming out of the draft. Some film breakdown of the two plays that really stood out for me from this weekend's game. Uh, but if you liked and enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please let me know. Let me know who you'd like to see me talk about as well, doing some film breakdown on as well. But with that being said, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. It really helps build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports. And that's one for you, the viewers. Trying to help you with your fantasy football teams, enjoy fantasy football more, and football overall. So definitely if there's anything you guys want to see that's football related please let me know and i will make it happen if you are new or current subscribers yet to do so also hit that notification bell it'll let you know every single time i post up a new video like i've been saying post up about five videos a week we'll be mixing up a little bit more some of these type of videos football news stuff like that especially heading into this off season uh going into the off season i like to profile some of the guys that i do like in the nfl draft um so you can consider them for like dynasty leagues or even redraft next year but with that being said that's all i got for today's video i hope you guys really 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 did enjoy this be sure to let me know down in the comments as well where you think Dwayne haskins is going to end up um obviously it's probably going to be next year uh with everything that's going on this year once again i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great great rest of your day